Hey, welcome back to this old house. Cut! You can't say that. Why not? Because there's already a TV show. It's already a TV yes. show. Yes. Okay, it's fine. Welcome back to this timely home. This aged estate. <laughs> Something. Anyway, welcome back to what we did. Hey, appreciate you stopping by. We, as why you clicked on this, you know, we're going to take this shed that I have here, one of our old ones. It was a seven foot by 30, no, 42 inches, seven foot by 42 inches. And we are going to uh, remove this one and build a five foot by 12 foot shed, a little lean to style shed. So, but anyway, appreciate you stopping by. Let's get to it. Let's go. Here we are, day one. Shed has been moved over. And so now, as you can see, working on getting the prep space for the base. So we're gonna bring some base rock in, get it leveled out. So this first part though, I've, I've actually dug out the dirt. I'm about two inches low, so I'm gonna bring in a two inch base, put the base down, we'll tamp it down, get it all compacted, and then we can set the forms for the base of the shed. Okay, hey, there we go. We have got the base done now. Five feet wide, 12 feet long. And man, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of moving rocks, moving levels, a lot of compaction. But hey, we're getting there. So now let's go to the next step and we'll start laying out the, uh, the framing for the base of the shed. See if we can't get the flooring on, uh, but I've got to go get the wood first. So now I've got the, the base put on, and I apologize, I left the microphones inside. But I've got the base. This is, I did it out two by fours. So I'm not gonna have anything real heavy in here, so it shouldn't be a, an issue based on the size. Uh, so yeah, so we've got two by fours, um, 16 inch on centers, and now I'm gonna put the, uh, the flooring down. Here I am, I've got the back wall built. And so what I wanted to show you was, we are, I've put the back paneling down and I'm using the, the lesser expensive paneling. This is like 30 bucks instead of the others that are gonna be on the sides and on the front that are like 40, $45. It's more of that ship wrap look, ship lap look. So anyway, got that. And then I'm also, we're going through it right now. I'm using this, this quad max sealant. Supposedly it does a, a better job in colder and wetter environments and I, you know what, whatever, I'm gonna try it and see. Uh, it seemed like it'd be a pretty good thing for some waterproofing. So we'll get that last last row done and then we'll get this wall stood up. All right, so the, the back wall is up and then I've got one more top plate that I need to put up there because we're gonna do two top plates on each wall. But now on to the side walls. Okay, so side walls have been put up. Now I'm working on this front wall. I want to show you something really quick what I did just because there's a door it goes right about where the ladder, well, I guess the side of the ladder. Anyway, I built the far wall, stood it up, screwed it into the side wall, and then I built this wall over here and stood it up and screwed it into. So now they are secure. And now I'm gonna bring the top plate and I'm gonna put that top plate on and then I'll, I'll put the, uh, the second top plate on as well. Hey, something else I wanted to show you real fast is you'll notice this wall here has considerable spacing on this side and also on this side back here. Why I have that is because I bought a window and I wanted it centered on this wall. So they're just slightly wider than 16 inches. Remember, it's a shed. It's not gonna have a whole lot of weight uh, bearing on this part, particular part of the wall. So should be good to go without any problems whatsoever. This part of the video is not sponsored by Sonic. Even though I'm holding up this cup, but hey, if you're thirsty, you're thirsty, head on over to your favorite Sonic drive-in, get yourself a large or a Route 44 drink, enjoy and quench that thirst. Let's keep going.
Got those, I got the front one cut. Getting the, uh, the rafters prepared. So I'm getting ready to trim all these, notch all these out so they set up there on the top plates. And then we'll get the, uh, the, the roof, the main roof put on there. Also, something else that's good to do at this stage is to go ahead and before you get everything else done, put some caulking on your exposed screws and your joints. You know, keep it weather tight. Do, you, do what you can to, you know, protect this from the, from the elements as best as possible. So, yeah, so I've done any screws or joints uh, that are not going to be behind some kind of trim. I mean, I still did it out here on the corner. I just thought that, hey, just in case some water or something gets behind that trim, uh, I still want that corner to be secure. Same thing on the other side. After I had installed uh, this particular you know, rafter here at, at the 48 inch spacing, th this first one here, right here, over here. Anyway, uh, after I put it in, I put the hurricane strap on, I'm like, oh crap, how am I gonna put a double? Cause this is where the next, next sheathing is gonna start. It was up here going that direction. I'm like, oh crap, what am I gonna do? So all I did, I just notched it out to where it would slide over this because- Oh, hell no! <laughs> this one I was planning on having it screwed into the other one. I just wanted to make a nice, tight, you know, solid connection here. And so I did that and I did it down here uh, on this one as well. So just a little notch. Like I said, it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna screw it in together. It's gonna be screwed here. It's gonna be screwed all down through here to where everything is nice and tight and secure. So. I won't have any problems, but a little, just in case you run into a situation, I know there's gonna be construction people be like, what in the shit did he do? But anyway, uh, it will work. Because like I said, everything's gonna be tied together up there. It'll be, it'll be nice and strong and sturdy. No, no problem whatsoever. As you can see, the roof is on. Yes, I've, I ended up cutting uh, three, three panels that go across here. They're each four foot wide and each panel has has 15 screws in it so three uh, five rows of three so yeah uh, here we go now I'm getting it prepped I'm trying to get all the uh, actually I did I did some of the painting earlier today too so yeah so the, uh, the shed itself is painted so it's getting the uh, the trim ready to go so that way then I can put the uh, shingle edging on uh, around the edges and then we'll get the felt paper down we'll get the shingles on Whew, making progress so I've got most of the trim on now. I'm getting ready to do the, the roof here in just a little bit. Uh, but something I wanted to really you know, explain a little bit of tip about is, and it's funny because Ben talks about it. He's got this sign up in his shop that says, and that's Ben Napier from hometown. By the way, he's got this sign up that says, measure once, cuss twice. And I actually did that. And so it was on one of these trim pieces right over here. Just where I had measured the shorter end and not the longer end. Now, luckily it's down at the bottom and it's not that big a deal. We'll have rocks covering it up. But it's one of those things that says, hey, lumber is expensive right now. So take your time, think about what you're cutting and just make sure you're ready to go. But anyway, as you can see, there we go. We have it, like I said, it's painted, trim uh, other than around the door. And then I still got the window to put in. We'll do that here in a little bit, but I'm gonna hop up it's supposed to be windy tomorrow and so I want to get the roof done. So as you can see the roof, I have shingled the roof. Other than I gotta cut this this last top part off of this this last row of shingles. Um, but yeah I want to talk to you so the easiest part of putting on this roof was actually or actually hell the easiest part about building the shed so far was putting on the felt paper. So below this just so you know the steps the process that I did for putting this on and unfortunately I did not take a video because I had to beat a little bit of weather so you roll out the felt and I bought 30 pound felt some folks will go with 15 but the 30 pound it was like a dollar difference it was just less quantity I'm like well I don't need a whole lot of quantity but I'll take a, a thicker quality product so yeah so anyway roll it out use a few uh, shing shingle nails uh, shingling shingling, I don't know, shingling a word, shingle nails, you're just tacking it in every so often because trust me, you're going to hammer the shit out of these uh, shingles when you're putting them on. And by the way, I have great respect for roofers. Like, oh my God, th this space here, 12 by 50, you know, or 12 by 50, 12 by 5, 60 square feet. Jeez, I mean, and I'm, you know, did it in a hammer. So each shingle after you get your felt on, 
Um, let me back up just a little bit. Roll out your felt. You're gonna roll out your felt. Use a few nails in each one of them. Then the second row, I rolled it across, overlapped it, and then put my nails in there. Then the next step actually was to put the flashing. So I do have flashing that runs around uh, all four sides of the shed. The back part, I had to one side over here in the corner, just kind of had to bend it a little bit, but still, have flashing all the way around it. It goes over the top and gets nailed uh, down into it. So it's sticking out on the side. It overhangs about an inch and a half uh, on each edge, but then it is nailed to the top part of your roof. So you do your felt first, then you do the flashing, and then you're gonna come back, start with the bottom row of your shingles. Now, it depends on your shingles, which ones, like ours are architectural, so I didn't have to do a bottom row uh, on the bottom of it just to, as a starter row. Some of them have slots in them, so if it's got that, then you're gonna have to do the lower row first, then come back, put your first row on, work your way up. I've got the window put in now, as you can see. This was a super simple window to install and it's a great price. Uh, it's got tempered glass on it. It is 14 inches wide by 21 inches long. It fits perfectly in between the studs. So actually earlier in the video, you'll notice I've mentioned something about, hey, I've offset my studs a little bit wider on each side here. It's because I wanted a 16 inch opening to fit this window in. Super simple, cut it out and then it's got screws. It's already got the holes laid out for them screw it right to your joist, uh, to your, excuse me, to your studs. And then I've got a bracing here and a bracing here. And I, this bottom one, which I'll, I'll show, I flipped it on its side uh, that way because we're gonna put a little planter box underneath the window here. So once I get the trim, we'll get the trim on it. I'll get it all trimmed out and then I'll, we'll build this planter box later on. But hey, got the window installed. So building the door here in the garage, I'm doing something very similar to what I had seen at Lowe's. I stopped by there, I took a look at one of their doors and it looked like they had just sandwiched like, basically had just sandwiched you know, some OSB material together uh, to create kind of this, this look here. So yeah, the door, here it is installed. It is looking lovely. And so yeah, so now we're, uh, we got it all on here. Everything's all trimmed out, door is installed. Been working on getting the handles on. This is an awesome little handle one. You know, it can be locked if you needed it to. But this, this handle was super simple to install. It just is literally, it's like four screws, two screws, the handle, and then the butt. Be careful, like you don't lock yourself because you do need this one on the inside. Uh, what I use, a 5 8 paddle bit to drill through. So then it comes through and then that way you can when you turn it, that's how it, uh, you know, you don't get locked inside because otherwise if you don't have this handle on and that closes, you're out of luck. Unless you got another way out of your shed. But anyway, super simple handle, cool little thing. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. I did get some longer screws that actually, these are three inches that are going all the way in because the ones that came with this you know, they were only, like I said, they were only thick enough as to, you know, this thick here. And it didn't really, I mean, like it barely went into the stud. So I, I wasn't real comfortable with that because one, by the way, this door is super heavy. So I like, I mean, I bet the thing's 50, 60 pounds. It's crazy. I mean, I love how the, how solid it is. It's an awesome, solid door. Yeah, that, that door there weighs a ton. I can't believe how heavy it is. I was like, woo, man. I want something that's more stout. So if you get a chance, it's probably not a bad idea. It might be better just to frame it. I mean, it depends on, I mean, it works. And one, this is a bigger door. I didn't split it. So this thing's 46 inches wide. So it's a big door. Uh, and so it's got a little bit of weight to it. But you know, if you were gonna make smaller doors out of it, like maybe half that size, uh, you could easily do something like this. It'd be just fine. But otherwise, you know, a big door like this, I probably, next time, I probably would just build a frame out of two by fours and then put the siding on top of the two by fours, trim it out, call it good. It'd be a lot less weight. But yeah, so now let's, uh, we're gonna step inside here and I'll show you, I got a little painting. We're just doing a little, some kills. You see a little bit of that stripe over there. Uh, doing some kills, you can start to see some of it in there. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We bought one of the, the Wagners. This was on sale a couple weeks ago. Bought one of the Wagner spray paint guns 
and it's really helping out. I mean, in some of it, it's like, oh yeah, oh man, this thing, super fast. Uh, we're getting there, so I'm, I'm still making my way across the, the ceiling there, but now, you know, we've got a first coat on over here, and like, it's a shit. I just, we just wanted to kind of brighten it up a little bit inside here instead of it being brown, we're just gonna make it look white. So there we go, that's all painted on the inside. The uh, paint sprayer actually did a really nice job of painting it all. So I've got ceiling and the whole works. So we've got a nice, nice good first coat on there and just kind of brightens it up a little bit. Makes it, uh, makes it just a little bit better in here. Something else that I did was I wanted, you know, to not cut a big hole in the shed when I was getting it ready to vent it. So I just drilled a bunch of holes in the side from in there, which should allow you know, a little bit of breeze coming through. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to cut a big hole. I just didn't like that, that idea. So now I'm going to put the, uh, the vents, the vent, the cover, the grate, whatever you want to call it up there on it and we'll go from there. And from the inside, I actually tried to line it up with the studs. Unfortunately, missed one over here, bottom corner. It was just slightly going to be off. I knew I was going to miss one of them, but yeah, the rest of them, the other uh, four are in the studs there. And I did caulk around the vent as well, just to make sure that no water gets inside all those holes. So top and two sides, and then if anything does somehow get in, well, the bottom side's open, but it's below all the holes. Hey, so one of the, uh, the final additions that we had added to the shed is these little lights back here. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're all solar powered, just a couple screws to attach it to the shed. Uh, solar panels on all four sides, so it, and it produces some pretty cool light. So here, take a look at this night shot. Anyway, yeah, these things were pretty sweet. We got them off of Amazon. They came in a two-pack, and yeah, they do a great job at nighttime. So, hey, might be something you want to add to your shed. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you watching all the way here to the end. It was a super fun project. It wasn't too difficult to actually build this. Uh, it took a little bit of time, thinking, a little effort there, but not, not horrible at all. Took me about three weeks actually to complete the entire project. And here, I'll put a uh, list of the parts, materials that we use, what we paid for them right now. We all know wood is expensive at this moment in time. So probably cost a little bit more now than maybe what I would pay for in the future, but we needed this storage now. So yeah, so thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video. All right, take care. See you soon.